feel bad that we didn't bring you a thimble. Yeah. A little gift. Uh, <laughs> Sam taught us nothing. Hannah, I think uh, what everybody uh, can't wait to hear about is uh, your experience playing Cassie on Skins. Can we talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're all here. That's why we're all here. <laughs> Very, very scary, and thought that she hated me. And, and I remember she, yeah, she was like eating nuts and like walking around the room while I was reading, and I was like, oh god, I've really like messed this up. What kind of nuts? Um, probably like, I mean, I'm gonna go with cashews, but I've just like. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just saying that. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I just remember being like, oh my god, she's so, and I knew she was like a really big deal, and my agent had sort of told me she was a really important person to me. And then she kept bringing me back in for stuff, and I was like, oh, I guess she. I guess she likes me, I don't know, but she's, she's kind of hard to read. Um, and then she cast me in a movie called Chat Room. And so by the time she was casting Game of Thrones, she was, I kind of knew her and I felt like she was on my side. So I was told, there's this show, there's, it's the second season, there's this part, they think you're really, really right for it. Um, would you like to come in? So I went in, I read a scene from season three um, which the, scene? the scene where we sat around the campfire and I asked Sam to sing for me. Um, and I love, I remember, because I remember preparing for the audition and doing that scene and I was like, this is really, really good. I was like, there's so much in here, there's so many different ways you can do it and the writing was just so like rich and complex and interesting and I was so excited by it. And I went in and I was like really ready to like play around with it and try it with these different ways that it worked out. I did it once. <laughs> and they were like, okay, that's good, you can leave now. And I was like, okay, that either went really well or really badly. <laughs> and then a couple of weeks later, I, I got a call and I got the part and I just graduated from university, so it was like really good timing for me. <laughs> so just for the record, your audition was not just them asking you to pronounce the word Rhaegar. That came later. <laughs> that never came up. Okay, good to know. So, obviously you joined the show for season two, yeah. and season one was immensely popular. It was an instant cultural phenomenon. Legions of fans out there from the books already. So this was a thing right away. But, that said, it has obviously become even more of a thing in the ensuing years. When you joined yeah. one year in, did you have expectations? Did you have any sense of how massive this was actually going to become? Absolutely not. I had, I had no idea that the show was going to become. I mean, you, I don't think you ever would join a TV show and be like, yeah, I think it's probably going to be the biggest TV show of all time. I'm on Star Wars now. Yeah, it was just like, it was, I thought, I watched the first season and I thought it was really, really good. Um, and so I was really excited to be a part of it, but I didn't, I remember sort of signing on and knowing in theory, oh, this could go for like a few more years. Like, I, even now being at the final season feels very surreal and the fact that I've done the show for seven what did you know about the books before coming to the show? And is it, is it even important to uh, go beyond what's on the script page to try and seek out your character when building the character? I don't think it's necessary. Um, I read the books, I read them kind of as we did them. I read them more for, more for interest, actually, just I was like, oh, there are these books that have to do with the thing I'm working on and I want to read them. Um, so I read the first two books before we did season two. And I read the third book before we did season three. And then when we were about to go into season four, I had dinner with David and Dan, and they told me that um, Gilly was going completely off book that season. So I decided to stop reading the book so that I wouldn't get kind of confused. Basically. So I've only read the first three books. So you stopped reading around when George R. R. Martin stopped writing. Is that <laughs> loose time frame alignment? Yeah. How did you, uh, how did you find it? What was what did you use to, to build the character up? Um, so I I remember um, David and Dan recommended to me that I read a book called Room, which obviously has now become a very yeah. successful yeah. Yeah. movie. Wonderful. Um, and so I read that, and I did I was kind of yeah thinking about it for, at the beginning in terms of the whole kind of like the Fritzel case and things like that, and. Um, yeah, Room was really, really helpful um, to me, and um, that was kind of the beginning 
of it was, yeah, it was, it was so trapped in this very tiny world of trauma. And um, then what's been fascinating to me has been as she stepped gradually further and further away from that world and her world has expanded so much, there's been this kind of like discovery of joy. And um, that's been so interesting for me to play. And so I, 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 for the first couple of seasons, I made a very conscious decision never to smile. Um, that I was like, that's not the facial expression she will have learned because she has had nothing yeah. to smile about in her entire life. And then there were gradual points where it sort of started to bring that in in like a small way into the season four, season five, when she's at Castle Black and she's a lot safer. And I remember doing, there's a scene where I am plucking geese with, um, with Sam. And we, it was, I think it was the first scene I shot on season four and we rehearsed it and I, was, I turned to John after the first rehearsal and I was like, John, she's so happy. And it was like, she's so happy. This is so amazing. I could feel it like all through my body, like how, how great she feels. And um, so it's just been this, and it's also this discovery of kind of like a sense of self, because I feel like she didn't really have, that before she, at the beginning she's, she's one of Craster's yeah. daughters. She's not really an individual, she's not really allowed to be an individual in any way. And then I feel like there was this kind of discovery of like her developing an ego and developing desires and like she wants to learn to read and all these things, like she's just, she's gone from being this kind of, almost like this blank nothing to being a really, well-rounded, full, fully functioning character. And yeah, that kind of thing is, is that journey. I think that's one of the things that we all, I'll just speak on behalf of every single person in the room. I think it's, it's one of, like what you're describing is one of the things that we all really love about the story, whether it's the show or the books or every, any aspect of it. It's the world that George and the showrunners have created is really about roles and rigid routine and somebody else saying to you, this is who you are and this is what you get to be. And all of the characters who we as viewers and readers bond with are the ones who find a way to break free of that and find their independence. So it's, it's really cool to hear you describe that. Since you mentioned John, Sam, dear Sam, dear sweet Sam, how much do you guys or any other actors on the show help each other try to find the true voice of your character, and how much do you guys like bounce ideas off each other? How collaborative is the process, or do each of you really have your own routine? Um, I would say that for me and John, it's been a very collaborative process because we're not just trying to portray our individual characters, we're trying to portray a relationship um, that has developed and changed a lot over the years. And we're also portraying this kind of like this family unit, which feels very important to us. And so, me and John, I mean, me and John met the first time I was 22 and now I'm 28 and we both like worked on lots of different projects in between the seasons and we've both grown a lot as actors and changed a lot and, and learned a lot from other projects, from each other, we teach each other a lot. I think it's just a really interesting kind of, yeah, we were always really keen to kind of collaborate and make sure that the tone was right in between the two of us, that it wasn't just each of us showing up with like Thing that was separate from what the other ones were doing. And one of the big things we were always really keen to do was make sure, I hope we achieved it, to s stop the material from ever being too kind of saccharine. Mm -hmm. Because I think they're very... Don't think that's been a problem. They're very <laughs> sweet yeah. people, and sometimes the material is very sweet, and we wanted it to always feel like it was truthful at the same time and realistic. Um, recent seasons, your character has gotten to interact with more, more characters from the show, go to different locations. Um, what's that been like? Is it, it must be nice to come down out of the snow and, and be in places that where the sun is kind of shining still. Yeah, it was great. It was really, really great to go to Spain um, on season six. Uh, it was the first time, my first time out of Belfast. Um, and uh, yeah, I think in some ways my experience has been kind of parallel to Gilly's in that she gets to kind of go to these new exciting places and I get to go to these new exciting places. And um, it's been really fun. And yeah, I know the opportunity to, I think we have like one of the most wonderful casts of any TV show probably 
evolved in history. Um, and so to get to work with um, more and more people, and, and it's been just such a treat. Is there anybody who, well, first of all, is there anybody who you get to share a scene with in season eight for the first time that you can tell us about? And I'm gonna try to sneak as many subtle and not so subtle season eight half questions in as we can. And uh, related to that, which is sort of another way of trying to get you to answer that question without technically asking you that question, is there anybody you haven't gotten to share a scene with who like, you really wish they could, you know, the bucket list of Thrones pairings, and you're looking back and saying, ah, oh, I wish I had gotten to share a scene with X, Y, or Z? Um, so I obviously can't tell you anyone that I share a scene with. We have 35 minutes left, and we will wear you down. <laughs>
TV. Um, my other favorite scene is uh, the naming, we're talking about the naming of Baby Sam. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just, yeah, we had, me and John had so much fun with like all the different like Westerosi names that he yeah. comes up with um, and suggests. And then I love that, like I love that she wants to name the baby Mormon and he's like, you can't. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. And, yeah, and um, I just, yeah, I just, I think it's such a sweet, sweet scene and it kind of sums up their dynamic to me so quickly that it's sort of funny and awkward and but very, very lovely. I will be naming my first son Mormont, but that's because Jorah Mormont will be the father, so. You heard it here first. Um, just following up on that, is there a favorite scene of yours that you're not in, that you that is not connected to your storyline at all, that just you as a viewer watch or like, wow, for any reason, is the technical prowess involved, the emotional impact, anything? Yeah, so there's um, my favorite scene in terms of like why I wanted to do the show. When I watched season one, the thing that made me really, really want to be a part of the show was the scene between Robert and Cersei. Oh, I love that one. It's such a good scene. Yeah. Such a good scene. And it's just such a, it's so, it's so simple and it's such a long, like dialogue driven yeah. scene of just these two people sitting around talking about being married yeah. and hating each other. Yeah. And, um, and I just, I remember watching that and being like, oh, because you know, it was this thing, because like, people sort of forget that it was very unusual to do a fantasy show. Yeah. And no one really knew what this was gonna be. And, and so watching season one, I was kind of like, this, what is this gonna be? And then I saw that scene, and I was like, oh, that's the show. Like, that's what it's about. It's character driven, and it's so, so well written. And I found out afterwards from talking to Dave and Dan, that that scene, they, when they uh, originally had written season one, and then kind of edited it all together, they realized they'd come up short. They didn't have enough material oh, wow. uh, to fill the kind of 10 hours. And so they had to write some like, bonus stuff. And that scene was was bonus. It was like kind of wow. extra, and, and it's, yeah, it's not from the book, but it's like, and um, yeah, I just, that, that scene's always kind of stuck with me as being really, really special and kind of set the tone for me of like, yeah, just why I wanted to I'm wondering, based on that choice, because one of the things that's always stood out to us about that scene, specifically because it is not in the book, it is a show creation, is how adeptly that conversation taps into basically the perpetual nature of despair and regret, and that is really the through line of that conversation. And so, in light of that and how you responded to that, if, if you could change one decision that Gilly has made, if you could undo one thing that Gilly has done, if you could have just said, listen, girl, take the sack off, brush your hair, <laughs> don't name the baby what you named him, anything it might be. Is there one regret that you have carried on Gilly's behalf that you would like to absolve her of? Um, I'm trying to think. I, actually, I would say don't name the baby Sam. Yeah. Because it is confusing. It's a good note. It's a good note. <laughs> well, like you just call him Baby Sam for the rest of his life. Yeah, exactly. He's like, Young he's Sam? Like, Young Sam? You can have a rapper name? Little Sam. Yeah, Little Sam. It's what we called him. And it's like, that's not, that's not going to work forever. Like, she hasn't, she's, there's no foresight in that, that decision. So, yeah, that would be my But maybe if he's like, becomes really huge, then it could be an ironic name. Yeah, sure. You know? Like how yeah. a lot of bouncers are like smalls. <laughs> maybe it'll work. <laughs> the thing I love about that scene between Robert and Cersei is how there's a moment of warmth between them at the, towards the end of it, like a, a, a levity. You know, she's like, we always been holding the kingdom together, our, our marriage, our love, and he laughs. Um, and, the, and the show is not known often for those moments of levity, and I think that's the right choice, obviously. But there's a, there's a moment in uh, season six when um, you've arrived at Horn Hill, and you wear a dress for the first time, you come out, Sam's seeing you in, in a dress for the first time. <laughs> and I just, there's something so delightful about the way you like kind of totter towards him. <laughs> Could you talk about that scene? Because I really, I find it delightful. Yeah, no, I can definitely talk about that scene. And it's interesting because it was not written that way. 
it was written, so the, also there was a kind of, it, in some ways it almost felt like it was, like they'd written the scene kind of for my benefit. Like I knew, I remember from like a while back, but maybe even on season three, David and Dan being like, we want to get you in a dress at some point. Like, no, <laughs> and then I had the same costume yeah. for like five years or something. <laughs> and it was, and, um, and Kit's always very mean to me about it, but he calls me sad. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and it is like it's like the worst it's the worst costume on the entire show. I remember once I, I was like being sort of having it like tweaked and stuff and Kit was sat there and he was like, it's the worst costume on the entire show. Like just it's so awful. And um, and uh, yeah, so I so it was kind of a sort of running joke and then it's the premiere of season five in San Francisco, Dan Weiss comes up to me and he's like, two words. New costume, <laughs> and, um, and I was so excited, <laughs> so excited. And then I, when I read the scene, the way it was written was kind of like this, like I sort of say, like Hermione in in I was just say yeah. that. moment where yeah. it was like and Sam so, is your Victor like, Crumb. She's it was like she's she looks so beautiful. She's wearing the most beautiful dress, and she's this and the other. And I remember sort of reading, I was like, I don't buy that. Forgive like I don't right. like it feels it doesn't feel true to me that sudden like and I was like and we sort of joked about I was joking a lot with like the hair team and the makeup team and the costume department about like it's my she's all that moment yeah. <laughs> but, I was like, but I was like but it's not like it shouldn't be it just didn't feel that didn't feel honest and in the end the dress was kind of like it was not that great <laughs> It was like, it was, you know, and at the point where she was borrowing it off her sister, so yeah. it shouldn't have fit her perfectly, and it shouldn't have felt like, oh, it's like this thing that suddenly transforms her into this, like, natural beauty that she always was. I was like, she's going to be uncomfortable in it, she's yeah. never worn anything else in her life. And also the shoes they gave you were really weird, so the kind of, like, waddly thing was yeah. not even necessarily a choice, it was like, just how <laughs> to do it. Um, but yeah, so I kind of, I was like, I really wanted her to look very uncomfortable in her own and I wanted it to be funny, and then I thought when then he says, you're beautiful, it kind of means a lot. That it's, a, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's about them, and it's about what he sees in her, rather than that she just looks like yeah. they're gorgeous. And, um, and then when I talked to David and Dan about it, they were like, oh, we're kind of sad that it didn't work out the way, we, you know, the way <laughs> yeah. with the costume, that it wasn't like, and I was like, well, no, I think it's better, and Dan was like, yeah, I guess you're right. Kind of is better. Like, thanks for making it better. Um, so yeah, that was um, that was the. <laughs> that was the <laughs> you mentioned kid. Uh -huh. So John's parentage has been the central driving mystery of the story for for some fans for literally two decades. So when you found out that you were going to get, that Gilly was going to get to deliver one of the most crucial pieces of information in the history of the story, the Prince Rhaegar, or Raga, <laughs> reveal. Did that weigh on you? Like, did you feel the burden of expectations? Did you, did you have a sense of how meaningful that moment was going to be for fans? Or was it just mostly thrilling to be able to take part in something that was that core to the canon? Well, so I, I have to say, and I don't mean to sound like awful when I say this, I thought from, I, from reading the first three books, I thought it was pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> this is well, the two decade wait is more a byproduct of just literally how long it takes for the books to come out, and not necessarily the, uh, the strength of the mystery. So I so I was kind of pleased for me. I was like, I think I figured this out. So then I guess I was pleased to be involved in, I, was, I didn't expect to ever be involved in the delivery of, of his information like that. So for sure I was very, I felt very honored that Gilly got to be the one to kind of do the reveal. Um, but uh, I did not know that it was gonna be the reaction that it was to that scene. And I was doing press for a movie um, last summer when the episode aired and the next, and or, no one would talk about the movie to me. <laughs> like, all anyone wanted to talk about was that scene. And I was like, and they were like, it's blowing up on Twitter, it's this whole thing. And, um, and yeah, and I was really, really shocked.
shocked that people had such a big reaction to it. And I loved it, and the whole, and the whole kind of Sam taking credit and yeah. like... Uh, we have multiple yeah. questions here about yeah. that. Yeah, um, so yeah, it was, I didn't really, I think when I, and I think in a way, the same, the same way that Gilly does, that she stumbled across a piece of information, sort of reads it out, but's kind of throwing it away. I myself did not really understand the importance of what I was doing, the, the effect it was going to have on people. It, was that true for other people involved in the show? Like, was that true for the showrunners? Was that true for other people in the scene? Or was that more specific to I you? I think that was specific to me. No, I think I was just like, yeah, a bit naive about it. <laughs> Talk about that, uh, the, the fan reaction. You mentioned it uh, blowing up on Twitter. Um, I mean, do you think that that reaction was justified in the sense that here's this gigantic reveal? Um, apparently, a, you know, a Prince Raga was uh, got his marriage annulled. And let me tell you about my tough day at work. Right, and then Sam's like, ah. <laughs> do you have any? What a high step in Raga. Can't get my bosses to respond. Oh, I'm like, I'm ransom. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you think that that was a, a justified reaction, or what was that like to to like be part of a scene that caused that much of a stir? Yeah, I think it was a totally justified reaction. And I love, no, and I love that I saw a couple of things that were like, it was, you know, it's like that moment when um, type comments. And um, I just thought it was, yeah, I think it's very, I, I think in a way I'm surprised more wasn't, I'm in some ways disappointed that more wasn't made later on, mm. of, I, that I didn't get a moment to be like, hey, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, so, do you think Gilly is just sitting there nursing a grudge that Sam goes up to Winterfell and plagiarizes right. her term paper with yeah. Bran? It's like, no, let me tell you what I know. He tells Bran he doesn't say, he should say Gilly read yeah. it. Where's the cool Absolutely byline? Absolutely no credit. Where's the cool byline? Exactly. It's an outrage. Yeah. It is an outrage. It's not yeah. like there's a 50 high septums out there. You know? Come on, I'm telling you. The patriarchy is real. <laughs> what else? Did the White Walkers anything about the Long Night? Well, there was a scene that got cut. Tell us everything. In season <laughs> seven. Tell us everything right now. Which, which I think I can talk about. I think, yeah. I think we all have. <laughs> no one here. <laughs> no one here will say it. There was a scene where um, I was reading a book called uh, Legends of the Long Night. And um, which I, which, and I also I would say like our art department is so incredible that these books are like real books that you can actually read. Like they're amazing. The level of detail involved is so incredible. So I was, yeah, I was, and I was, I remember I was like reading this book to myself, like in between takes, because I was like, it's actually really interesting. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, there was a scene where um, Gilly reveals that. Um, the White Walker, that Craster's sons were being given to the White Walkers, and that she always knew Gift that. for the gods. And, um, and that she, yeah, so she, as she says, uh, some, some people, some of the wives called the White Walkers Craster's sons. Amazing. When and you it see... was kind of a bit, you know, it felt like a kind of important moment for revealing something about her. Course. And I remember doing a lot of press in season seven and being like, and people were like, what can we expect? And I was like, well, in my very like ambiguous, spoiler-free way, there are some really interesting revelations about Gilly's past. And then I watched the season and I was like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just more about the set. Yeah. yeah. Wait, when you see like, because you mentioned the books and how, how fully realized they are, when you see, or if you see, like the nature of, of the, the internet community that has sprung up around Thrones and the fandom, a lot of people in this room participate in it. People, you know, pausing, going frame by frame each episode, taking screenshots, and the scrolls and the books in the Sam Gilly storyline were a huge part of that. People saying, "Oh my God, is that the cat's claw blade?" Oh, obviously the the, the <laughs> scene that Gilly and Sam discussed with the dragon glass cave, like. When you see that there's a whole online culture built around something you've held in your hand, are you like, wow, this is wild? Or are you like, oh my god, I actually know what the next four pages are. Like, I, I wonder if I should snap some, some quick shots on my cell phone and see what I can get on the black market. Then not necessarily. I don't know if that, like, how, like, spoiler heavy those, yeah. those books would be. But um, I just, yeah, like I said, I'm just in awe of the, the work that our art department does. And um, I didn't realize, I'm, I'm not super aware of some online stuff because I'm not on social media. Um, but uh, yeah, it's amazing that people are, I, 
think it's well, I think it's great that people are paying so much attention because so much effort is put into the detail of the show. Uh, shipping is a, a huge part of fantasy culture, culture of Game of Thrones fandom. Are there any characters who haven't got together yet, or may not get together, that you would personally like to see shipped together? Um, there are a few that I'm like... I'd love to hear. Yeah. Well, so I'm very torn. I'm a very, I'm a very, very big fan of Brienne. Yes, we all are. Yes. We all are. both options. Yeah. Torment or Jamie? Jamie or Torment? Yeah, you gotta you pick. Not, like, how do you pick? Exactly. I'm, I'm, like, like, I'm picking the guy with the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put your on. Two good hands. Give me the count two good hands. <laughs> I actually ship, I, I ship uh, Jamie and Brian. I, yeah. I think yeah. it's you. Yeah. They just have that moment in the, in the, in the bath scene. They understand each other in a really uh, fundamental way. James opened up to her, um, unlike he's opened up to anyone else, really, in the, in the world. It's a beautiful moment. Yeah, and truly they say goodbye the best to each other, made me cry. Yeah. Um, Agonizing. Yeah. Well, I hope we get a. So, when, when, in what episode of season eight will we see Brienne and James? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it right away? Is it in the premiere? Right, it's the cold open. Is that? You, you tilted your head a little, so I feel like that's a subtle, like, no, it's slightly later. So, I'm going to say. <laughs> another bath together this time it <laughs> Also, I'm a really, I'm quite a fan of um, Tyrion and Sansa. Oh! Oh! Yeah! This has been coming up a lot this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, particularly as she's, like, come into herself more and more, it's like, oh, they're, like, really, like, equal match now. Do you ship Sansa and Jon at all? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to tee up my next question, which is uh, about some light incest. Okay. <laughs> light. light to moderate incest. Ooh. What about Gendry and Arya? Yeah. What? <laughs> Seems like a divisive prompt. We'll save that for later. Uh, Gilly, not a stranger to incest, sadly. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Since that is the case, what do you think Gilly's advice would be for John and oh. Danny? Um, a little incest chat, you know? Yeah. Here's how I dealt with it, here's how you should deal with it. I know, I think, um, I mean, it's very different when it's, it's very different when you didn't know. True. Um, yeah, I think, um, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm not sure Gilly would be, I wouldn't go to Gilly for a relationship. <laughs> Skinning a rabbit, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, building a fire, yeah. like, how to change a medieval diaper. <laughs> Hearing that raiders are approaching in the distance. Yeah, no, I don't think, I think she'd just, I don't think she'd have, because also one of the uh, important character choices for me as well, and for, and me and John have discussed this a lot, um, is the fact that Gilly and Sam don't really care about, I mean, Sam does, Sam obviously cares a lot about John, but um, Gilly doesn't really care about anyone, <laughs> aside from her and Sam and the baby. Right. And like, it's, and, they, and they, they have that scene on the boat where he's like, um, I don't, he's like, I, I'm doing this to say, and he's like, I'm doing all of this to save you. And he's like, I don't really care, and she's like, yeah, us and everyone else in the world. And he's like, no, I don't care about everyone else. <laughs> he's like, I do, but not really. And I think there's something like, I don't think, I think Gilly would just be like, she's not, she's not really interested in other people's lives. <laughs> Honestly, not, not a bad strategy. Yeah. Stay and, focused. And also, I've always, I've always secretly suspected that Gilly is not the biggest fan of Jon Snow. Ooh. Oh, yeah. tell us more. Because he's, he's kind of a dick for Sam. To her. Right. And he's kind of a dick he's to also her. Like, just leave in her season here. two, he's like, just leave her here. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, he's, yeah, he's competition. I don't think she's, I think she'd be like, yeah, go, go sleep with your aunt and leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think Gilly has warmed up to Ghost if they're together again? Well, yeah, because Ghost is Ghost in season eight. Can you tell me if Ghost is in season eight? <laughs> <laughs> Can you please tell me? If Ghost I was going to say she's, I think she's, 
she's a big fan of Ghost Note because Ghost saved her from being raped. So they're they're old pals, and yeah. she will go to Winterfell, and then because of their emotional bond, <laughs> the showrunners will have no choice but to put Ghost in season eight. Yeah. <laughs> Official confirmation. You heard it here first. <laughs> Uh, speaking of sex and boats, <laughs> so you mentioned that you had read through the first three books. Does uh -huh. this mean? I think I know what you're gonna. Does this no. mean that you have not read the Sam really sex it. scene no, in the books? I haven't read it. I'm aware of its existence. <laughs> Jason does a wonderful yeah. dramatic reading. Yeah. Like, it's different. It's different when the when the actress who plays the character is in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this for anyone here who's not aware of this fine piece of literature uh, uh, that I care deeply about. It, uh, it involves the descriptive term, quote, pink mast. Pink mast. That's all I will say. I, cannot, I, I feel terrible now. I feel great. I feel great. Uh, since we were chatting about ghosts, quick, quick lightning round here. Dire wolves or dragon? Dire wolves. Ooh, great wise. Wow. You can actually like be friends with a dire yes. wolf. I feel like she pretends she has this connection with the dragons, but it's not. It's very one sided. <laughs> Uh, if you had 
have the opportunity to play another character on Game of Thrones, who would it be? Great question. Um, I'm gonna go with either Cersei or Tyrion. Oh! <laughs> Amazing. First of all, Hannah, I love your story arc. Thank you very much. I'm a big fan of Arya, and I've come to love Sansa, but you're very interesting because you've had trauma, 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 but guess what? You have not been violent. Yep. And I think there was an innocence about you that kind of protected you in that way. And I think Sam coming along and taking you out when he did. Now, I have not read the books, so I'm only going by TV. This was your first child, correct? Yeah. So that's a good thing. Because if you had lost other children, do you think that would have had a more profound effect on, on Gilly? If, if your children, more children had been taken off? Yeah, quite, quite possibly. I think that there's definitely, there's an innocence in the relationship that she has with, with her son and the fact that she was able to, I think the fact that she was able to save him gives her so much hope yes. and, um, and sort of belief in the good in people and the good in Sam. Um, so yeah, I think you're right that if, if she, if this was kind of, if she had a series of babies taken away from her by Craster, then it might have been a very different that we know. See, and I love the fact that he's painted these other extremes, but he's also given you another way, and that you've done wonderful, and the relationship is wonderful. God bless you. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering if there's anything that you could tell us as far as upcoming projects for you, as we may see you. Oh, yeah. Um, so I just finished a movie called Charlie Says which is about um, the women who killed for Charles Manson. Um, and I play Leslie Van Halen. Um, and uh, Matt Smith plays Charles Manson. And uh, it's uh, Mary Harron, who did American Psycho, directed it. Um, and Gwyneth Turner, who wrote American Psycho, wrote it. And it's a really, really, really cool, really female-driven movie. Um, and I'm very excited for people to get to see it. Something, something lighter for a change. Hello. Hi. Um, so I had a question about working with the baby. Obviously, you got to know this, got to know this child, and you kind of started watching him grow up. I wanted to know what it was like. Like at first, did you have to spend a lot of quality time with the child? Because obviously, you know, children cry when they're not used to being held by people. Like I don't know. I just wanted to know a little bit about your relationship with the baby. Yeah. So on the first from season. Uh, three, four, and five, we just had a lot of different babies that we would switch in and out. So we'd usually have four <laughs> a day. That's and, the baby. Uh, Bringing baby two. I want to hear about <laughs> you. This one child is like, well. Yeah. Um, we had a baby Aria one day, which was very cool. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was kind of, the, the, I remember David and Dan were like, people don't care about continuity with babies. And, <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was, it was kind of, I mean, you would, and also at that age, they have to just be so close to their parents the whole time that you kind of just take them for the shot and then put them back. Then season six, seven, and eight, we have had, um, we had, well, no, season six and seven, we had one set of twins um, who we, yeah, who we got to bond with much more closely. And yeah, you, I mean, you try and like hang out with them as much as you can before, um, before shooting so that they, they, they feel kind of comfortable with you. I remember they were really big fans of putting their fingers up my nose during, <laughs> six, during takes, which was great. Um, but they did some amazing stuff. I mean, there's such, there's the beautiful scene when we arrive at Horn Hill and that like, like, reaches out to oh, grandmother and it's like, you couldn't have like asked for anything better. Um, it's been a really interesting challenge working with the kids, but um, it's, yeah, it's kind of, and then we had new, new kids this year as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Um, this is going to sound really pretentious when I first ask it, but I'll elaborate a little bit. You know, a lot of people ask actors about their process, which uh -huh. I, I hate it when people do that. But I've noticed in the show, as many, as, fan as many fantastic actors who are involved in the show, for some reason, even when there are distractions while I'm trying to watch the show, anytime they focus on Gilly's eyes, on your eyes, I stop what I'm doing and I know I need to listen. 
Is that something you consciously cultivate in your acting skills, or there's something about your face that makes people pay attention? Even if, <laughs> even if you're just going to say, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> you still, it's something about your face and the emoting in your face makes people focus and want to listen to what you say. Um, so. Thank you so much. That's like that's an amazing thing to be told, and it's definitely not something I think I have control over. It's obviously something I aspire to. It's a natural but, talent. But yeah, it's natural. Talent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's not. Um, I mean, I, 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 my process is different on every job that I work on um, for this kind of specific project. But um, yeah, but just thank you so much for saying such a lovely thing. That's really really. That's the truth. Thank you. Hi, I, I hate to bring another baby question, but okay. uh, you know, a, a lot of times when uh, we see women on screen, we kind of think, oh yeah, you know, of course she can carry her baby around or something. And, and I, I know that's not necessarily your experience. So was there anything that you needed to do in order to kind of like adapt to that process of like, okay, now I'm a mother. Like, was there anything weird about that? Um, it was weird, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, I don't have children, so it's all very unfamiliar to me, and um, I always just kind of, I mean, I kind of hope that Gilly's winging it a little bit, maybe, so it's okay if I'm sort of winging it too, and I, I, it's just, the only important thing has always been, like, whenever the child is in the scene, that's my focus. That has to be my main focus. That's complete reality. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's something that I kind of, it's not like I've done, like, research into it really, it's just kind of, I try to just have a sort of instinctive approach to it, I suppose. Thank you. Hello. Hey. Yeah, um, I'm just curious, do you think that um, Gilly planned on getting away with the kid all along when it came along, or did she just capitalize on an opportunity when it presented itself? You mean in season three? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um... I don't know what she would have done if Sam hadn't been there at that particular moment. I liked, I mean, I think she has an incredibly strong survival instinct, so part of me likes to imagine that she would have gotten out um, by any means necessary, yeah. Um, but it was definitely fortunate that things worked out the way they did. Thank you. Thank you. Well, friends, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us today. Um,